I want to build an AI assistant that I can run on my phone. Now, the thing is, is I don't want just a simple chat bot. I want to be able to talk to it and have just a verbal conversation with it without having to type a single word at all. Now, the only issue is I have no Android development, so uh, no Android development experience. So I'm going to be starting pretty much from scratch here. So I kind of have this three stage plan. Uh, we're going to build the pipeline on the PC first, find out how to build that pipeline then on Android and then do trial and error until it works. So um, we're going to be figuring that out in today's video and you guys are going to be following along with me in that process. Now, I already have kind of an idea on what models I want to try out. Um, I'm going to be trying out Google. Google's Gemma 3N model. Um, I hear this is optimized for mobile devices. And then for the text to speech, I'm going to be using Murph AI, who's today's video sponsor. So I'll talk a little bit more about them a little bit later once I get to that step. So I'm in the process of downloading Gemma 3N on my PC, but I actually found that there's an app that we can use to try it out on, on my phone. So um, I went ahead and also downloaded some models on my phone. It's this Google AI Edge Gallery um, app, and this is offered by Google themselves. And if I go into like this model right here, this is the uh, 3N E4B. Um, if I, let's say, take a picture um, of my face and then send it, um, well, I guess we can just check out the model and, and try it out. And we can already kind of proof of concept that it does indeed work. So cool. All right, late 20s to 30s, that's acceptable. And the okay so the speed isn't too bad like uh the amount of uh tokens per second that it's producing is completely manageable and i think if we chunk this out we could get a real uh real real time vibe to this uh too but um so far for like proof of concept i probably don't even need to try it out on the computer i can pivot to figuring out how to do it on Android. So I was going to go through this whole process with you guys, but basically it's pretty boring. So what I ended up doing was asking ChatGPT to get guidance on the initial steps that I would need to start Android development. So it walked me through getting Android Studio up, how to get my first Hello World app on my phone, and then how to get a lightweight application uh, modified and developed for the chat interface that we wanted for the large language model to be able to talk to it. Okay, okay, okay. So we've got the LLM running on the phone and it's it feels so much faster than what I saw earlier on the, the Google app. Like, watch, hold on. Uh, hello there. Look at that. Look at how fast that is. That's super, super fast. Um, so I, I think we've got a winner here. I think we'll probably be able to get some real time feedback in here. Um, I've got to try a few more things, but for initial impressions on LLM speed on the phone, absolutely fantastic. So yeah, I'm going to figure out how to use video, how to get my audio on the phone working so that it can understand me and um, continue on working. Um, through this okay so this next portion i ran into quite a bit of issues and it wasn't as easy as earlier so i was running into a lot of issues with the ai gemini built into android studio where it simply wouldn't work or it simply wouldn't do all of my work for me one issue that i had was that it kept doing imports incorrectly for example this graph options here the way that it solved the build process here was by simply removing it and commenting out of the code which obviously doesn't work because I needed it. So that was a big issue. So in order to fix this, I ended up having to go to the documentation and actually learn a few things. And I also even tried to learn how Android development works, but really I just ended up copying the documentation and throwing it into ChatGPT where I was actually able to make some progress. Okay, I got everything working. We've got everything working. I tilted so hard with trying to get this thing working because the um, artificial intelligence kept doing incorrect imports, but um, alas, here we are. And I am gonna, let me go ahead and uh, set this up. Okay, so I can go ahead and load an image here. And then I've got my microphone where I can just speak to um, the app. Hey there, can you analyze this image for me? Go ahead, stop, audio clip, audio sense. And here we go, it responds. Certainly, here's an anal analysis of the image. Overall impression, and it's basically a graph of some studying that I'm doing with some flashcards. So it's 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 doing it really fast, super quick. So I've got to go do a. I can't speak. 
got to do a couple more modifications um, to get it to where I could have it maybe do like a video call where I could um, ask it about things when I'm talking to it. Um, but proof of concept is is here. Uh, we can speak to it with audio. We can send messages with text and we can upload images and get responses back to it. So naturally, the only thing that we're missing now is for the model to be able to speak back to us. And so that's where today's video sponsor Murph AI comes into play. So Murph AI has been a key player in the AI text-to-speech world for a while. When I had just started my channel a few years back, they were actually one of my first introductions to AI text-to-speech. Recently, they've just launched Murph Falcon, which is an ultra-low latency text-to-speech specifically designed for high-quality, real-time voice agents. With this latest introduction, it achieves speeds as low as 130 milliseconds of latency to first speech, and it's a multilingual model with over 150 voices across more than 35 different languages. Not only that, it's one of the most efficient services, coming in at about 1 cent per thousand characters, or roughly about 1 cent per minute of usage. Now, why can't I use a local text-to-speech model? If this was on my computer, this would be no problem at all. Um, I'd have no issues getting the latency down on my own computer. However, the issue is that I'm running on a phone and local models still are not quite up to par in terms of quality and speed for something like this. Um, even if I was running something like Kokoro TTS, which is a very small model, it would still take a decent amount of latency on my device and wouldn't be able to keep up with what I want. So we'll be figuring out how to use Murph Falcon here. Um, we're gonna need to get an API key, so that's where we're gonna go here to get access to this you just need to sign up i'm just using a google account and they give you a free balance of ten dollars where you can use to test things out so we're going to go over into generate an api key or first you know text speech falcon and then we're going to want to generate an api key and so i'm going to name this android studio and then going to generate a key and then i'm going to download this to a folder so I hid that from you guys, so you guys don't have access to my API key, but this is what we're gonna be able to use, and we're gonna be able to use it with some type of API request. So we've got the documentation here, and what I'm gonna actually do is just test this out in Python first before we try to get it onto our local device. All right, so I've got a minimal demo here. We can test out Murph via Python with the uh, API key that we've got. So have it in a YAML file, and we can just go ahead and run this. So I'm gonna run debug. And uh, this is going to save a file to output. Hey there, Jared. How are you doing today? Okay, so not bad. This actually sounds fairly good. Um, so w there are a decent amount of customizations here. I was looking into the um, documentation and you know you got voices that you can try out inside of their um, interface here just to see which ones might be suitable and so they've got a bunch of different things that you can try out inside of their api here uh, you can read the documentation on this page uh, we're going to be just using this streaming um, demo and now we've kind of got it in python so um, i gotta go and figure out how to get this inside of android studio so that i can get my uh, phone working with it and the whole app so so that's going to be the next problem to try to resolve and try to get this incorporated into the app. Okay, so here we go. We've got Murph uh, working inside of the app. We can speak it here. I don't think you guys can hear, but... Hey there to you too. How can I help you today? Ready to chat, brainstorm, get information, or just hang out? Let me know what's on your mind. All right, so there we go. We've got the British dude in our phone using the Murph uh, AITTS. And what I now need to work on are some um, optimizations. So, alrighty guys, one step closer to the real-time assistant. Uh, let me show you guys what I've got so far. So, uh, you can see on the screen here, uh, we've got a bunch of new things in the, in the graphical user interface here. We've got some buttons, but those are still broken for now. Um, the cool thing that I added was microphone input. So, I'm going to ask a question and uh, we'll see what we get back. So, um, I tested it with the keyboard up here. That does indeed work. But, hello there. How is your day today? Cut Readings. me off. My disposition is placid. How fares yours this day? I trust you were engaged in stimulating pursuits. Um, yeah, but, uh, got anything new to tell me? Indeed. I have been delving into some recent analyses of temporal paradoxes within quantum mechanics. The implications for causality are quite fascinating, wouldn't you agree? It presents a delightful challenge to our conventional understanding of linear progression. What inquiries occupy your intellectual sphere presently? 
Okay, so there you go. So that's what I've got on my phone for now. Um, there are a few things that I need to work on to optimize things and to actually add the features into. Like video chat is still broken, uh, so it doesn't actually work here. Um, I do kind of have this hamburger option where I can set a LLM setting. If you're wondering why it sounds so strange, is because I said you are a fellow intellectual. But um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, work on those things and... Um, the next time I come around, we'll have the finished app. So hopefully everything goes well and no issues happen. Alrighty, so we've got everything going. I've got the model loaded and now it's time to demo. So we're going to jump into video chat here and uh, I'm going to show you guys what I've got. So just need to go into video chat. I'm going to show the chat so that we can see how it's responding back and we're going to go ahead and start using it. Hey, pardon my dirty desk here, but uh, can you tell me what's going on here? Indeed, a cluttered workspace often accompanies intellectual pursuits. It appears you have a digital audio workstation running on the monitor to your left. The mixing console in the center suggests you are likely engaged in audio production perhaps recording or mixing music or podcasts. The cables indicate connections to various audio devices, and the keyboard and mouse are essential for navigating the software. It's a snapshot of a creative workflow. All right, can you uh, determine what this might be used for? That is an Oculus Quest headset. It is a virtual reality headset designed for immersive gaming, entertainment, and increasingly for productivity and social experiences. The controllers are likely positioned nearby for interaction within virtual environments. It suggests an interest in exploring digital worlds and augmented reality. Alrighty, can you tell me what anime character this is right here? That is Ram Dallas Botley from the anime Rebecca Blacksmith. She is a popular character from the Rebecca Blacksmith franchise, known for her distinctive blue hair and layered outfit. She is often depicted as a diligent and somewhat studious individual within the series. Alrighty, so it got that video analysis uh, wrong for the character, but everything there was smooth, fast um, encoding for the video, and then the output back was great too. Alright, so a complete success, I'd say so myself. Um, got everything that I wanted in the app, and if you're curious on how I did it, I'm going to go over that real quick right now. So for the library that I used for the Android app, um, it's mainly the heavy lifting is Google AI Edge Media Pipe. So this is Google's solution to being able to run those um, like Gemma 3N optimized models on mobile devices. And so this is the entire documentation here. Um, I tried to read some of this, but mostly I just went through some of this with uh, ChatGPT in order to help me make that application. And then once again, I used the Murph API for the text-to-speech here. So the API has a reference inside of Murph that you can look at for their streaming um, if you want to use their text-to-speech for streaming. But those are the two main um, heavy lifters for the project for today. Um, and yeah, there are some issues with trying to use LLMs with MediaPipe. Um, it seems like a lot of their um, information is out of date. So you'll have to make sure you're steering the AI correctly uh, to reference things that are more up to date and whatnot. Yeah, there are a couple of things that I did want to show just real quick on uh, the app. Um, we've got it up here. Um, so yeah, so we've got like the LLM settings. You can set kind of like a system prompt here. Uh, so that's pretty neat. And then like the TTS settings, um, you've got an option for putting a Murph API key in here. Uh, you can change the voice ID here uh, with the model Falcon. That's the one that we're using today for the low latency. And then you can change kind of like the locales here um, and whatnot. So a super cool thing about Murph is that they do have different languages in here. So if I wanted to do something like Japanese, I was playing around with this a little bit earlier. Uh, we can we can switch this over into a Japanese voice and even get some um, generations in Japanese. So let me go ahead and just switch this over to that there. Go ahead and apply the TTS settings here. Gonna reset the chat. And then we can try to speak to it in Japanese. Konnichiwa, genki desu ka? Konnichiwa, 
Genki desu yo. Anata wa ikaga desu ka? And there we go. It'll come back to us. So yeah, pretty good. Really, really fast. So that's pretty much it for today's video. If you want to try out the app, I'm going to actually try to put this on GitHub. So it's going to be up on GitHub. And I'll link down below where you can find the APK to download this if you want to try it on your own device. Um, the devices that I was testing on are a Samsung S24 Ultra and then a Fold 7. So they both have uh, fairly good chips and... Uh, you know, results may vary. So, so yeah, big shout out to Murph AI for their text to speech. And I thought it was pretty neat today to be able to implement it into my AI assistant, something that I was working on for my own phone. And yeah, once again, as always, like to thank the members of the channel for supporting me. I very much appreciate it. And I will see all of you guys later.